In this movie we're going to take a look at how we handle a CAD bill of materials in DDM. Currently on screen we have a small conveyor assembly that consists of a number of parts. The key thing to note is that the conveyor roller here is only modelled in one position although there are a number of rollers uh, required to complete the assembly. The second is that the conveyor leg itself consists of a fabrication um, or a weldment and that's a special case when we're dealing with bills of materials uh, as you'll see in a short while. So to create and store the bill of materials to DDM uh, we just simply save the assembly. We can also look in the PDM integrator menu and find that we have an option to scan the bill of materials and update the bill of materials within DDM. But by simply saving the assembly uh, we will update and create a bill of materials uh, inside DDM. So we have confirmation that the assembly has been saved. And so we can now return to DDM. And if we look in My Recent Items, we should be able to find the assembly uh, that we've just stored back to DDM. OK, to start looking at the Bill of Materials, if we right-click on the assembly, we can open up the Bill of Materials editor um, and see the um, assembly that we've scanned and stored back to DDM. OK, so let's start working on some of the items within uh, this Bill of Materials. The first thing is that we have the conveyor roller here um, that is showing that we have a quantity of one. Uh, in fact, we need more rollers than that to complete our assembly. So what we're going to do is to mark this item as a manually managed item. So if we right click on it and say manually manage, you'll see that the CAD quantity gets transferred to the real quantity column. So I'm going to uh, edit this and say that we need 15 rollers to complete this assembly. What we can also do is assign a spares quantity at the same time. So um, if we select this column then we'll say that we need to supply two uh, uh, spare conveyor rollers every time that we supply this assembly. And so we can see that we have a total quantity now of 17. This row is highlighted in green because these changes haven't yet been committed. Um, if I click on apply um, then they will revert back to uh, the grey and black colour. OK, the second thing that we're going to take a look at is um, inside this conveyor leg assembly we have our fabrication or weldment um, just here. And this has got these two items that never get stopped. They get uh, um, supplied um, as part of the fabrication. And so what we need to do um, is to effectively hide these items in the bill of materials. It's only ever the conveyor leg fabrication itself that will be ordered, not these two item pieces. So if we select these two items, again we can right click and select hide. And you'll see that these two items are now marked as hidden. Again if we apply that um, and expand the assembly we can see that we can't now drill down to see um, the components within the conveyor leg fabrication. If we've made a uh, mistake and we need to get back to those hidden items we can select to view the hidden, hidden items with this radio box here uh, and now we can access those hidden items again. So I'm going to switch that off. Um, the other thing we may want to do uh, with this bill of materials that's been um, populated from the CAD system is it may be that we want to add some items to it that um, are not uh, that haven't been modelled in the CAD system. Things such as uh, lubricants or adhesives um, may need adding into the bill of materials, but are items that we will never model in the CAD system. Okay, to do that, uh, if we return to DDM. What I'm going to do is search for uh, some lubricants that we have in the system already. And this is the item that I want to use. So I'm going to drag that and switch back to my Bill of Materials window and drop that item um, into the Bill of Materials. 
So now we can say, see um, we have our silicon spray lubricant um, added. We need to assign a quantity to it. You'll see that it's automatically been marked as a manually managed item. So we're going to assign a quantity. Um, we're going to say that this is um, 10. You'll see the unit of measure has been picked up from the part record itself, um, so 10 millilitres. We also have the option to um, add some remarks. So it may be that we want to say apply liberally. Okay. So again, we'll apply those changes. Um, the final thing we're going to look at um, uh, here is that we want to start organizing our bill of materials and ordering it. What I want to do is, is pull these standard items, these um, M3 by 10 socket head cap screws, to the bottom of my list. And so we're going to uh, add item numbers to the bill of materials. So if we select um, all of the items and right click and we can say auto number and I'm going to run with the default so we're going to start from 10 and increment by 10 and you'll see that we now have item numbers assigned to the bill of materials. So the final thing that I want to do is to force this down to the bottom. So I'm going to take this number and we're going to manually set it as 99. If we apply that then you'll see um, our fasteners have been pushed to the bottom um, of the bill of materials list. These fasteners are actually used um, in the subassembly as well. So if I open up the subassembly, you'll see that these are used to um, hold the leg cover in place. And so they appear at two levels within um, the bill of materials. If I want to uh, sum those items up so that I see them as a single item, then I can select to view the bill of materials as a bill of quantity. And now we're showing um, each, in, each individual item uh, within the assembly um, and those items um, totaled so that we have um, a collective or summed total of items that are required. So here we can see the M3 times 10 socket head cap screw and to complete this assembly there's 10 of those items required. Once we're in the bill of quantity we can't do any further editing we have to revert back, we have to switch off the bill of quantity view um, and then we're back into our, our standard bill of materials editor. So the final thing I'm going to do um, is to print this uh, bill of materials as a bill of materials report using some of DDM's standard reporting tools. So we're going to select uh, to view this as a multi-level bill of materials and we're going to show all levels. So we'll click on that um, and, the, and the crystal reports viewer will open giving us um, a report um, of this bill of materials where we can see all of the items within it. So we can see that we don't see below uh, the conveyor leg fabrication. We don't see the two items within that fabrication. Um, and also um, at the bottom of our list um, we have uh, the socket head cap screw that we've forced to the bottom through um, the, the position numbering. And also we can see um, our quantity of conveyor rollers set at 17, um, which is the value that we, we wanted to set. Okay, so that's a, a brief overview um, of how we work with CAD bills of materials in DDM.